Battle maps are a big part of role-playing games. If you've ever played a game in person, that most likely meant pulling out a gridded map and a handful of dry erase markers. Well, today, I'm gonna to show you how to upgrade your gaming setup with a digital mapping system. My name is Tom Tobar, and welcome to Behind the Screen, a Game Master's Guide. This is a show where I take you behind my Game Master screen, and I share some of my favorite tips, tricks, tools, and toys that I'm using to become a better Game Master. In today's episode, I'll be going over some of my softwares that I use in order to bring my tabletop games to life. Now there's nothing wrong with theater of the mind or our beloved dry erase. However, more and more people are becoming interested in running games in person with virtual maps. And for good reason. Virtual maps can be absolutely beautiful and have some amazing features that can take any game to that next level. There are, however, two major problems that you'll face when trying to upgrade from your dry erase setup. Problem number one. Most tabletop digital game boards are extremely expensive. Seriously, when looking to purchase a custom-made digital game board, the prices can escalate quickly. Not to worry. The first few tools I'm gonna to share with you today can be used on any TV that you already own in your living room and a single computer. On the other hand, if you have access to a few woodworking tools, you could make your own digital game board. I know, I know. It sounds like a lot, but actually it's a lot easier than you might imagine. Check out my video right here, where I take you step-by-step step into the process of building your very own digital game board for around $150. The second problem you're gonna run into is finding a software that can give you the same functionality as a virtual tabletop, like Roll20 or Foundry VTT. VTTs offer a number of really great game master and player tools that are hard to let go of when running an in-person game. Features like Fog of War and virtual miniatures for players and monsters are really important to a lot of people. However, many great VTT softwares do not work well in an in-person environment. As a matter of fact, there isn't even a name for the softwares that are compatible with at-the-table play. Think about it for a moment. VTT stands for virtual tabletop, meaning there is no table because everyone is joining at their own homes and joining online. What do you call it when there is a physical table, but all you want to do is use the same virtual tools? There isn't an official name for it. If there were, we could ask, does this software support? Insert name here. Because there's no name for it, it makes searching for these softwares that work in an in-person environment a lot harder to find. I submit this formal request before the role-playing community today to call this feature Virtual Map Software or Virtual Map Support, VMS. I'll be using this name for the remainder of this video in the hopes that it catches on and that software starts supporting it. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox for the moment and we can get onto the tools that you wanna learn about today. In order to run any of the softwares I'm gonna be talking about today, you're going to need to connect your computer to an external monitor. That monitor can either be a TV that sits in your living room or it can be a digital game board that sits on top of your tabletop. Here are the steps you're gonna to need to follow to get started. Connect your computer by using the casting option or connect directly with an HDMI cord. If your TV does not accept casting, you can invest in a streaming media adapter like a Google Chromecast or an Apple TV. Many of these devices allow you to use the TV as a secondary monitor. Keep in mind that not all devices connect easily with one another. It largely depends on the age of the computer, the TV, the media adapter, the brands all being connected together. If you're in doubt, it's best just to use an HDMI cord instead. 
make sure to set up your TV as an external display. When you first connect, you may only be seeing a duplicate of what's on your computer monitor. If you do, follow these simple steps. Right click on your desktop, select display settings, scroll down to the multiple displays section, select extend desktop to this display. You can easily rearrange the order of these displays to fit your setup. Roll20 is a very popular VTT, mostly because it's easy to use and it's easy to set up. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles unless you purchase the subscription model, which costs $59 a year. If you're just getting started, I would highly recommend using Roll20 because you can get away with running a full game at your house with only the free versions. One of the main features is the ability to create scenes for players and have digital tokens for both players and for monsters. You can also buy fully published adventures that do all the setup for you. They give you all the monster tokens, the maps, and everything else you need just to get started right away on your own without having to create anything. Here is how to use this software to get the virtual map support. First, create two free Roll20 accounts. The first account will be your Game Master account, and the second account will be your General Player account. Again, you only need to use the free versions at this point. Step number two, log in to both accounts on the same computer. Each account needs to be on a different browser. I'm going to be using the Chrome browser from my Game Master account, and I'm going to be using the Microsoft Edge browser for my player's account. Step three, Move your player's internet browser to the TV display and hit F11. F11 will make your internet browser full screen. Don't worry about repositioning the view of your players just yet. I have a trick for you a little later on. On your Game Master account, select each player token and set them all to be controlled by the general player account. At this point, your players will all be able to see their characters on the external display and you can run everything from your Game Master side. Anytime you want your player's view to change on the screen, all you have to do is go to your Game Master account and hit Shift, left mouse click. This will move everybody's view, including the external display, to the location that you've selected. The one downside from this setup is that the Game Master has to move all the players around in addition to all the other things Game Masters have to do. This can be easily fixed by adding a second computer and letting your players run all of their tokens. This is a great option because it's a completely free solution. Because the setup uses only two accounts, you don't need to have a paid account for this to work. However, you will be missing out on dynamic lighting and a few other features like suffering through some ads. If you choose to have the paid account for $49.99 a year, you will only need to have it for one of your additional accounts in order to get all of the extra features. Because of the zero cost setup, this is my first choice for beginners. Foundry VTT is a powerful platform that can do a lot of really great stuff. There is no subscription model to unlock all the extra features. However, there is a one-time payment of $50 for the software. Foundry has a lot of really great tools that are very similar to Roll20. However, you're able to make some very dramatic improvements. For example, you can use video maps. These types of maps are a lot of fun and can really make your tabletop come to life. There are also a number of animated tokens you can find online that are really super cool. For example, check out Benio's Token Spells and Items on Patreon. By subscribing to this Patreon provider, you can get a number of animated tokens that just look amazing. In addition to Patreon subscriptions that can give you extra features, Foundry also has an extensive list of mods from the community. These mods are really where Foundry sets itself apart from Roll20, and they can really help you customize Foundry to fit your needs. A word of warning about Foundry. In order to use this software's online form, you need to learn how to set up port forwarding, which allows players from outside of your home to be able to connect to your computer through the internet. This can be a headache to set up for the very first time, Luckily, however, there are a number of videos online to help you with this setup. From my limited understanding, port forwarding is like giving someone outside of your home a key to get into a specific room. That room being Foundry application that's on your computer. 
If everyone is already inside of your house, however, you don't need to give them a key to get in. Because we are not using Foundry's online connection options for this setup, you don't have to worry about port forwarding at all, making this software a lot easier to use. So here's how to set up Foundry to get your virtual map support, VMS, with an external display. Step one, connect to the external monitor like before. First, go to the cog in the top right-hand corner and then select User Management. On this page, you will add more users to your game. As you can see, I've already added a player called General Player Account. Don't forget to give this player a password to log in. Back on the main screen, select the Actors tab. Then select the individual tokens for your players and select Configure Ownership. Change both of these tabs to Owner. This will give control over to the general player account to control all of your tokens. As you can see, this is already the general player account that I have created. Once again, select the cog in the top right hand corner, then go to invitation link. This will produce a local network link. Copy and paste this link into a web browser. Use your general player account login information to log into the game. From the Game Master's view, hold Shift and hold down the left mouse button. This will move the map so your players see exactly what it is you want them to see on the external display. Foundry is a super powerful tool with a lot of really great options to expand and enrich your games. This can both be a blessing and a bit of a curse. If you're using video maps and a number of extra features, it can be a big tax on your computer, especially if you're running both the Game Master view and your player view. I would either use simple maps and limited features if your computer is having some trouble. On the other hand, if you can use a player computer in addition to the Game Master computer, that might be a better option. Tailspire is an interesting option to use. This software is filling the niche of 3D gameplay. Where all the other options thus far are from a top-down perspective, Tailspire and other applications like it approach the game from a side-on perspective. There are a number of really fun and interesting effects to employ in these softwares, for example, casting magic or interacting with the environment. You can also link 3D models you purchase from HeroForge and import them directly into the game. All these cool features, however, come at kind of a big price. First, you need to have at least two licenses of the software at $24.99 each. And you need to run these programs on two separate computers in order to run it effectively. When it comes to playing this type of game at the table or in a living room screen, it can be done, which is why I'm mentioning it. However, at this time, I don't really recommend it for this type of a setup. There are just too many things to set up or interact with, including building custom maps or on-the-fly player and monster interactions and a number of other items. Yes, you can build your own maps, but that takes a lot of time to do. Yes, you can pull pre-generated maps from the community, but then you're kind of limited to those maps layouts and their availability. If you have the time and the resources to invest, it can be a lot of fun to use this type of a software. If you don't have the time to invest, however, then it might be better to use one of the other options listed. Hey, if you found this video to be helpful so far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. That way we can make more videos like this to help out our community. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and move away from our living room setup and focus in on our digital game board setups. Where Roll20 and Foundry options are really great, they are really not meant for at-the-table digital game boards. Sure, if you follow my instructions, you can trick them into having virtual map support, but these softwares were not intended to be used this way. They were intended for online play. When we use them in in-person games, they can sometimes feel a bit clunky to use. The following two softwares I'm about to share with you are specifically made for digital game board setups. In other words, they are virtual map softwares. You see? It's catchy, right? Tell your friends. 
Dynamic Dungeons Editor was the very first software I ever used to help me run my digital game board. As a matter of fact, I still use this software today. You can find Dynamic Dungeons Editor on Steam for a one-time payment of $29.99, and you get access to all the features in this software. In addition to having the editor, this company also produces virtual maps. I highly encourage you to check out this map maker on Patreon. I'll go into a lot more detail about maps in my other videos. For now, I'll focus in on the virtual map software. It's important to note that there are no built-in tokens, monsters, or character creation options in this software, like there is in Foundry or in Roll20. Instead, the point of this software is to use miniatures or handmade tokens. I love using miniatures at my table, and this software makes using them a breeze. Decide on how many different scenes you'd like to create. This can be changed at a later time. Import the background that you would like to use. This can be a video map, image maps, or even images that you want to share with your players. This software has Fog of War options, and it's located right over here. If your map doesn't have a grid, you can easily add one here. Adjust the size of the grid to fit your needs. And you can also zoom in and out of your background with ease. Finally, you can switch between scenes quickly by selecting this icon. I love that I can jump from one scene to the next with just a click of a button. You can even add magical elements into your scenes here by just dragging and dropping. There are some additional features available, but this is enough to get you started. I personally love this software because it has a simple layout and it's easy to use. Game masters have a lot of information to keep track of and a number of things that they juggle at the table. Having a software that's simple to use means I can spend time running the game instead of hunting for buttons. At $29.99, it's actually one of the cheaper options available on this list. This is a software that I only just recently learned about when preparing for this episode. From what I've seen, this software is free to use for its basic features. There are some advanced features in this software, but like many of the other softwares, they're hidden behind a subscription wall. Things like the ability to adjust the weather, the wind, the time of day, and other color effects are kind of cool. Most of these extra features are not needed for most games. If you're just starting out and want to see if this type of game setup is for you, then I would suggest going to their website and trying out this free version of the software. You may find that you love this software and are willing to pay the $59.99 a year subscription for some of these advanced features. On that note, if you've used some of these advanced features in this software, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I, for one, would love to learn more about it. Okay, so what are my final thoughts about all of these softwares? At the end of the day, it just comes down to what works for you. All of them are really viable options for you. Roll20 is a great and easy system to use, and it has a number of modules that you can buy online that make running the games so much easier. Foundry has a lot of robust, amazing options and really make your gameplay come to life. Tailspire is a really new way of looking at the game, and my son and I played a few sessions with it, and we had a great time. Dynamic Dungeons is my personal favorite, only because the software is simple to use, and it gives me the opportunity to use my own custom miniatures. Infinite Realms looks like a lot of fun, and it looks like really interesting with the weather effects and the cool extra features that it has. In the end, I suggest trying out as many of the free options as you possibly can. You never know when one of these could drastically improve your gameplay. If you have a software that you like to use that has virtual map support, or is itself a virtual map software, let me know in the comments. Be sure to join us in our next episode, Tools and Toys Digital Map Libraries. In that episode, I'll show you all the places that I go to to get some truly spectacular maps that I just love using. Trust me, you are not going to want to miss that episode. Until then, I'm Tom Tobar, and I'll see you next time behind the screen. Thank you.